Well, welcome and thank you all for being here at the uh, MPC PFDD meeting. Um, my name is Sean Casson. I'm the director of the Arab Parsegian Medical Research Fund at the University of Notre Dame. Before we begin, I do want to take this opportunity to introduce you to some key individuals and groups that have helped make this meeting a reality. I'd like to thank the organizations that partnered with us from the beginning um, and that have been with us throughout the um, entire planning of this meeting. So Dana's Angels Research Trust, the Firefly Fund, the Hide and Seek Foundation, Hope for Marion, Jonathan's Dreams, Neiman Pick Canada, and the National Neiman Pick Disease Foundation. All have been critical in the planning of this meeting and developing the pre-meeting survey. I'd also like to acknowledge Dr. Elizabeth Barry Kravis, Dr. Denny Porter, and Dr. Mark Patterson, and Mark will be speaking in just a few moments, who have uh, gave us uh, countless advice throughout the planning of this process. Additionally, I'd like to thank the companies and organizations that supported this effort, and they are listed in your brochure. I would also like to acknowledge all the companies that are in attendance today, as many of them offered their support as well. Thank you all for being here um, to listen to the MPC community. It is also important to acknowledge our consultants from Fager, Fager, Fager Baker Daniels, we got it right, Lauren Block and Dave Zuck, as well as Tim Franson from Your Encore. Tim will be moderating today, and I'll introduce him in just a moment. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge and thank all of you, the MPC patients and families that travel from around the country for being in attendance today and participating in this meeting. It is your voice that is critical in the drug development process and is why we are here today. A special thank you to our panelists who have worked extensively to prepare their personal statements, which we will hear throughout the day. Also want to acknowledge the panelist alternates that also work just as hard um, in preparation for today, Rebecca Spencer, Megan Ferguson, and Melissa King. Thank you so much. As you know, we carefully selected these panelists based on the pre-meeting survey and worked hard to bring together a diverse range of experiences for you to hear today. Please know for all in attendance that the panelists will set the stage for the lengthy discussions that will happen throughout the day, and it's important to us that all of your voices are heard. We will do our best to make sure that is reality today. Three minor things before I bring, in, uh, bring up Dr. Franson. First, there is a child care room available um, in 2115 right there. There's lots of toys. There will be videos streaming uh, going throughout the day. There's even Irish Monopoly, so if anybody wants to play a game, you can meet me in there. Um, there's also an overflow room. This, is, this room is pretty tight and it might, get, you know, it might feel a little uh, uncomfortable at times if you get a little claustrophobic. So there is an overflow room um, in 2102 if you want to go um, there and, and watch, maybe take a break. Um, it'll be streamed throughout the entire day. And then lastly, for lunch, just uh, a quick reminder what we're going to do. We're not going to be eating downstairs. We're actually going to have two buffet lines outside of here. And then we have room 2105 that has about 80 chairs where people can sit. Um, and then also you can come back in here and eat. And then we will start promptly at 1 o'clock. So please just watch your time when, when you're getting um, food. But we'll try to move that as fast as we can. So now I'd like to introduce Dr. Tim Franson, um, who's going to be moderating today's meeting. Um, he's had three decades of experience um, working in patient advocacy. And it's just a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, all, and thank you for the privilege of working with this community on such an important endeavor. We're absolutely thrilled to see so many of you here and know there are others on the webinar to access the, the richness of the discussion to follow. So thank you again for all of your participation. My opportunity this morning is to provide some context to the meeting that will come uh, and play out now what you may expect in terms of the overall discussion processes, and then I have the privilege of also introducing our two guest speakers for the morning. So this is, uh, as we all do with disclosures, to, to make clear that while I work with a number of patient and industry organizations, anytime we work with groups such as NPC, we do not consult with those particular companies to avoid any uh, misunderstandings about conflict. Uh, so with that in mind, let me just give you a preview of what the morning and afternoon will be like. 
Uh, as you see, this will be a brief introduction. I would like to frame the discussion about what desired outcomes are of the meeting. You've all devoted all this time and energy. What do we expect in terms of deliverables and a springboard to moving forward to perhaps other advances you know, for this community? And then we have uh, the pleasure of, of inviting in a moment uh, Dr. Dragas Roman to speak on FDA's perspective and their approach on rare disease drug development and the importance of patient voice. This is something that's relatively new and very exciting. And then we will hear from Dr. Mark Patterson on an overview of NPC and current treatments. That is really just to orient us all to some common definitions, common ground, so that we all have clear uh, shared assumptions and understandings. And then uh, we will go into the discussion of the panel format. I will take just five minutes to preview for you how the panel will operate. Let, let me offer uh, some additional comments as well. As you'll notice, no scheduled bio breaks. So it's a brief two-hour session, but certainly let your body be your guide. If you need to excuse yourselves. I uh, also wanted to reinforce what Sean had indicated about the panelist selection and the criteria developed. So we, we did our utmost to assure a very representative voice that would appear from the community. And this was done through the pre-meeting surveys and then subsequent discussions and, and development. All our panelists will self-introduce themselves during the discussion so that we won't take time for individual introductions. We want to hear their voices and your voices because that's certainly the most critical thing in these meetings. And then, as Sean already indicated, after an hour of lunch, uh, it, which will be right here so you don't have to go off-site or anything, we will promptly begin at 1 o'clock. As you're aware, there are a number of folks joining us on webinar. And we will then proceed with the second discussion uh, session. And uh, as you've seen, that I, I neglected to just highlight that panel one will be talking about symptoms of NPC related to the late infantile and juvenile forms and the daily impact, what matters most to patients and their caregivers, their families, and so forth. Session two will be on current approaches to treating NPC, and that's, again, the late infantile and juvenile forms after each panel. We will ask you for your participation, first electronically and then vocally. So we will be doing survey questions to help us refine some of the outstanding matters that you may feel are important in the discussion of these particular topical areas. And we will highlight for you a URL where you can use your smartphone to be able to access the survey questions to vote, and then that will help us frame additional discussions. So this is a great way to begin to involve all of you. Uh, and we're very appreciative of our panelists on each panel being uh, the catalyst for these discussions. And then we'll, we'll be providing the opportunity for that open discussion after the polling questions on each panel. And then we'll go to uh, the panel three, wh uh, which will include symptoms of NPC in early infantile and adult forms. We recognize that, as we'll hear from Dr. Patterson, although the concentration of many of the patients are within that central portion, the tails of the curve, if you will, are very important as well. So we want to be sure we give representative consideration to the patient voices there. And then we will entertain, after the facilitated discussion for the third panel, open discussion. So if we haven't touched on particular areas that relate to the patient voice, we will certainly be addressing that, uh, after which we'll do some summary comments, and Sean will close the meeting promptly at uh, 4 o'clock. So without further ado, just two slides for you to further frame our discussion. So what is patient-focused drug development? What are we doing here? And what is the intended outcome of these aspects of our dialogues? This is a new program which was initiated by the Food and Drug Administration at, in concert with the congressional uh, legislation that invited 
a much more systematic input of patient perspectives on specific diseases and their treatments. And there are actually from 2012 to 2015 or 2017, uh, over 20 meetings that the FDA had sponsored in order to gather input from patient communities and better refine some of the expectations in trials and so forth. This is one way to make sure patient voices are represented in drug development. There are certainly many others. There are preference studies that are done by independent organizations, by sponsors and so forth that help to further refine natural history of various diseases, so there are a number of things that can be done to complement what today's session is intended to, to bring forward. And then this information from patients and families, how they feel, how they function, how they survive, are critical points that as one is able to craft them into ways to better measure and capture that information, helps drug developers and the FDA in terms of their decision-making processes. And obviously, the hope and aspiration is to better expedite drug development process. So my last comments here on the desired outcome of the meeting, to provide and capture the views representative of patient experiences with both diagnosis and care in NPC. And again, we had helped refine this through the pre-meeting survey that many of you contributed to. And since this is sponsored to allow the FDA, and there are many of FDA colleagues here in the room and also on webinar who are listening, to provide them the direct patient voice, to hear what it's like to live with NPC. And uh, secondly, to talk about the complexity of the symptoms, variations in the disease, both in time and how each individual patient may experience the progression of illness, and then the concerns about those disease symptoms through the progression of this for individual patients. Again, we tried to construct things so that there are representative views from a number of different demographic points, that is, an age, gender, and so forth. And then finally, what patients desire is meaningful treatments to improve how they feel, function, and survive. Obviously, we're not talking about specific investigational agents here. That was particularly one area that we did not address because what we're looking for and what FDA is looking to listen to by, by how they've described these programs is hearing the patient voice, what influences how patients feel, how they function, and so forth. So the final intent, expedite development improvements, impact decisions by regulators and sponsors,